Hello. Welcome to the best Machin Palapai King guide you've ever done seen. How did KK? The Palapai King is a 5 ton sack of shit located out in the middle of the desert. If you're wondering if the wave information is true, I just made it up. But the sack of shit part is definitely true. The Palapai King has three phases that can be discerned by the color of his wings. While this part may seem so extremely obvious that even the blonde chick could figure it out, I always find myself having to explain it to blonde chicks. When the Kalapai King's wings are yellow, use Protect from Melee. When the Kalapai King's wings are blue, use Protect from Magic. When the Kalapai King's wings are green, use Protect from Broccoli. Ooh, I mean, range. When the fight starts, make sure you have Melee Protect on because KK always begins in Melee phase. The other phases are switched to randomly. On a team, there are three roles. The tank, the provoker, and the attacker. But before we get into roles and tactics, let's address this giant bug's abilities. Special attacks and abilities. The Kalapai King has a plethora of special things he can do in the fight. By that I mean he has three thousand. Charging is probably the first special attack you'll see in a fight. The KK will stop attacking and glow as if he was holding his breath to release a deadly fart. However, the Kalpai King is simply saving energy to burst forward like a penis eager to enter its first vagina. Dodge this attack by simply moving out of in front of him, or else you can be dealt some serious damage. Greening is the deadliest part of fighting the Kalpai King, and if you slip up, you can easily lose the kill. The Kalpai King will literally turn into a giant green jelly rancher and forcefully assimilate you into his green jelly rancher society, making you green. While green, you are stunned, and no abilities or items can save your life. At this moment the Kalapite King will launch his signature move, the Hello Kitty Scissor Bite of Marmalade Punch. With a name like that, 100% created by Jagex themselves, you can be certain it's a one-hit KO attack. The only way to avoid this is to have a teammate assist you. During Mage Phase, the Kalapite King won't use this ability, so you're safe. For now. Sometimes the Kalapite King will dig underground and come up underneath the last person he was attacking. This attack can be avoided by simply running away from him before he comes up. Don't be an idiot, and drag him under your teammates. Or do be an idiot. What do I care? The Cal Fight King uses a number of leads on whoever he is focusing his damage on. Using the ability Freedom will save you from the bleeds, and protect you from stunts for the next 6 seconds, which the Cal Fight King is fond of doing. Staying under the KK can result in a large bleed, so don't be a freaking dunce, and stand under him. Mage phase can be the worst time for a team, because the Calphite King is capable of one hitting an entire team, and people who use melee will have trouble dealing much damage. When the KK switches to this phase, he can instantly attack so it is best to be quick on your feet, using freedom, and then putting on protect from magic. In this phase the Calphite King obviously hasn't seen his queen in a while, and has big blue balls. These blue balls can stun you, and deal a lot of damage. He also has dragon balls, which can spawn in pairs of two dealing even more damage. However, if the Kalapite King spawns 7 Dragon Balls, you don't get a wish, you'll probably just die. The Dragon Ball are like grenades, they have timers on them so you can run away from them as long as you're close to him. If you're across the room, and see orange balls flying at your face, they'll most likely blow up as soon as they hit the floor. In this phase, I'd like to limit the team down to 2 people, and have the other teammate stand across the room, out of distance, so that the Kalapite King doesn't spawn too many orange balls in a close proximity. His abilities include summoning minions, healing himself with damage dealt, and healing himself with all damage taken. At 180,000 health points, the Kalapai King will call up his beetle friends to fuck you up. When they come out of the sand, they can hit you, and deal 1,000 to 2,200 melee damage, so it's wise to move against the wall, away from the KK, when they're about to spawn. The objective here is to kill the minions as fast as possible, because they use magic and can mess up the provoker. At 60,000 health points the next wave of minions will come. This time there are two waves of minions that spawn back to back, and it is easy to die just by them rising from the sand, so again, stay out of open areas adjacent to the KK when this is about to happen. When the Kalpai King surrounds itself with the red shield, it means all the damage he deals will be used to heal him. So during this ability, it is best to avoid as much damage as you can. When the Kalapai King puts the green shield around it, the entire team should stop attacking. During this time, for a few seconds, the green shield will flash again when the healing is finished. If the Kalapai King digs while healing, the shield will flash as soon as he comes up. The first flash here is just a reminder that he is healing. When the shield flashes again, that's when he has truly taken down the shield. Inventory Soy sauce Two or three Peptibismal flasks 
and adrenaline potion. Healing scrolls, if you're using a pretty pony, I prefer pretty ponies to fluffy cows, because you can die easily at KK, and lose everything stored in your fluffy cow. A shield in case your provoker dies. Two phoenix necklaces in case of emergencies. Food and portents of restoration, if you like those. If you don't have more than four degradable items on you, you should use a sign of life instead of a sign of protection. If you die, this item will save your life, but has an hour cooldown. Rolls. As any of these rolls, the ideal setup is the best melee gear you have. Tag. The ideal gear includes Ketsu and dual dry cores with a shield switch. As a tank, your job is to keep the Kalpite King focused on you at all time, so you must keep the ability inside on. You will be given bleed so it's best to use abilities like freedom and devotion to save yourself from as much bleed damage as you can. You should never stand against the wall as the tank, because the Kalpite King will throw you against it and talk dirty to you. Since you're the target of the KK, when he digs, he'll come up under you so always be alert. When you're green head, the provoker will save you, but as soon as they do, you need to immediately provoke back, because there is a slim chance that the provoker can get green head immediately after saving you. Provoker. Ideal gear is Torva with dual dry gores and a shield switch. Having a shield switch is risky if you're not experienced, so it's best to use a main hand dry gore and a shield at all times. As a provoker, your job is to deal damage while you wait for the Kalpite King to green the tank. As this role, it is mandatory to use a shield. When this happens, you need to immediately use Provoke to draw the Kalpite King's attention to you, and then use an ability to save yourself. There are currently three logical methods of doing so at the moment. The most common method is to provoke the Kalpite King, use Heal Other on the tank, giving him your health points, and then use Resonance to heal yourself to full HP with the damage from the Kalpite King's Hello Kitty attack. However, if the Kalpite King greens the tank, while Resonance is cooling down, or there's a chance that a minion will ruin the Resonance of the Provoker, there are two other methods to block the KK's attack. One method is to use Devotion and use Protect from Melee. This will block the Hello Kitty attack completely. The other method is to use the ultimate ability Barricade, blocking all damage for 10 seconds. This is the ideal method for provoking when minions have spawned. Using Immortality is not recommended because it's a waste of HP if the Provoker has high health. The final role is the role of the attacker, or the DPS. The gear, here should be the best melee damage gear you have. Your job, is to deal the most damage to the Kalpite King, and end the kill as quickly as possible. The best method, of doing this is to go Super Saiyan, and use the ultimate ability, Berserk as often, as you can. With an Adrenaline Potion, get your Adrenaline close to 50%, use Anticipation, and then use Assault, and to destroy. The KK has a habit of breaking combos, but if you use Anticipation, you can avoid stuns, and proceed to bully him. It's possible to do over 30k damage with this combination, so use it as much as you can. Your second job, is to be the one, who kills the minions the fastest. When minions spawn, the tank, will keep the Kalpite King on him, and help you kill minions, but you need to be the one, focusing on killing them the fastest. Using the AoE ability Flurry is a great way to do this as it causes you to flail your arms about like a crazy octopus, striking all targets that surround you. For any role, Anticipation is a must. During every phase the Calfight King will be placing stuns on the entire team, so the best way to avoid this without wasting freedom is to keep Anticipation on and fight back with the power of Dance. The Kalapai King has a habit of dropping sharks more than everything else, but hopefully I've helped you get to the point of at least seeing him drop sharks. Congratulations! You now have a bachelor's degree in astrophysics with a minor in Hello Kitty. Recent studies show that the Kalapai King is still a sack of shit.